Episode three, ugly on the inside. Wait, 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 redo that. We shouldn't tie, don't, don't number them. Okay. So that we could just. Hey guys, welcome to the ugly on the inside. No, okay. I got you. Ready? One, <laughs> two. Jesus Christ. I hope you're recording all this because this is going to be how the episode idiots. should start. Okay. Welcome to the show. Little idiots. Okay. You know, I was trying to do some new things here by, I think I want to hold the mic and I like wearing the headphones. I like it too. But it doesn't really go with my outfit. And my problem is I'm really annoyed that this entire medium of podcasting has gone visual. Because the whole point of it was supposed to be radio. And oh. I have a face for radio. Are you comfortable holding your arm like this? What? I don't know. Oh, yeah, I don't know. Good thing. Yeah, it was starting to hurt actually. Um, and this medium was made for just talking. Right. Or audio. Right. And then, you know, now everyone's. I'm really liking the look. Yeah, glasses. Thank you. thank you. They can't see it, but I'm, um, you know, wearing short shorts. Yeah, no, I'm, you I've got my vacation vibe. So, um, I don't know how we're gonna set up whatever we're trying to do. This is just Val and I together alone today, and he brought me a little uh, smokies, a little something to smoke during this episode. And I told him I'm gonna try. So you see that smoke the whole thing down as we record. You see that little string of wax. What's this 3D printed? plastic shit that's gonna give me some fucking lung cancer no nah, it's good trust me okay. but it's meant to Came be from a russian guy <laughs> yeah yeah okay I, oh, trust armenian me. actually uh, who armenian armenian oh <laughs> even less trustworthy but listen you see that little wax that's around that's the tiger the, stripes that's dab wax so that that's gonna get you really okay, silly willy all right guys so for this episode if you smoke uh join me yes please everybody light it up baby i get high i get high i get high all right. Well, um, today's discussion. How was your weekend? Weekend was very weird. Why? A lot of weird shit happened. I actually have to tell you something and I want your opinion on something. Okay. I've been discovered by my family in Ukraine. What do you mean you've been discovered? They didn't know you exist? So they knew that I existed, but I don't think they cared that I existed till they saw a little snippet of our podcast. See, number 31, the fame, it's going to tear our entire family. People don't understand this. When you get the kind of heat that we have right now, as big as we are and as, as insane as this podcast is already, like we're doing what? Nine, 10,000 views on YouTube? Not bad. Yo. Yo. Th these are unheard of numbers. So listen. Unheard of numbers. And your Ukrainian family is coming out of the woodwork? So I think there was a younger cousin or the younger generation that is more computer savvy found my Instagram and showed it to my mom's brother. And he kind of reached out, I guess. Wait, do you know this guy? I've met him once or twice when I was very little, <laughs> but I never really had any interactions with him and he never cared to really see how I'm doing. Some how would we're say doing. you've done bigger. They didn't reach out when, okay. So there's a lot of, uh, he only reached out because of the podcast. I'm guessing, but, or there was a request in a DM from him in 2021. You and I never saw your it. uncle huh? on Instagram. You ghosted your uncle on Instagram. I never saw it. Oh, you're so popular. You can't afford to no, read you know these what DMs. It is? I just usually get a lot of weird requests and I just don't bother even looking at them. So I guess I never saw that message out of nowhere. I Does he have like a weird Russian name? His name is Vitaly. It's Ukraine. He's Ukrainian, yeah. but whatever. It doesn't really matter. His name is Vitaly. Vitalik. Exactly. Yeah, I wouldn't open a DM from Vitalik. <laughs> So Unless I, I want to get taken. So in the DM, I see a missed call from someone and I'm like, what the hell is this? And I see that it's my mom's Ukrainian middle name and his and Vitalik is the first name. And I'm like, hmm, I look at it and he says, call me. And I'm like, holy shit. I click at the picture and he looks just like my grandma. And I'm like, wow, that's my fucking uncle. So you and just call him? Did so you listen, call him? So I go, hey, what's up? And then I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, dude, it's been 30 years. He hasn't wished me one happy birthday, hasn't reached out ever. And out of nowhere, he's now on this hunt to reach out to me. And I just want to make this very clear to my family in Ukraine. I have no money. <laughs> like, I'm broke. The money's maybe. coming. Like, but I want to I want to let you guys know that we still are financing furniture from 2001. Okay. And we still, <laughs> we're, we're still paying that off. Amax is hitting me up talking about, can you make the payment happen? And I am telling Amax that I'm still Curl. recovering Gross. from COVID. What? Froze. What froze? Oh. So, I mean, realistically, who cares, right? They yeah, still have those. They still have it, right? That's still yeah. going? Yeah. 
This fu I literally just said we need to replace. Sorry, Val, we interrupted your story. The story's still the so the backup computer fucked up again. Damn. So why don't you just close it and reboot the... Will it affect the recording if you reboot the computer? No. So that way you can just start the recording. I it's mean, still recording here. Oh, it is. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it just I just, bu <laughs> just butchered my whole fucking well, Val, the best segment. Part, the best part about the whole situation is it's Val's just trying to tell this like emotional buildup of a story. <laughs> Kyle's just like... A computer for cut, maybe, cut. Maybe, maybe the computer's just like this is I'm, not a good story. I'm not redoing. Really yeah, the computer was like, yo, that story sucks. The computer just went to sleep. Uh, well, listen. I Wait, did you call him? The, I called him. Kyle, can you still do the switching though? Because yeah. it's just. I, I, I don't know. Like, oh, you don't know what's happening? Do you want me to turn the TV to you? <laughs> oh, that's just on me now. Just split us both for now until the computer reboots. Do the split screen. Oh, well, not that one. <laughs> Keep oh going. God. One more. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Guys, we're learning as we go on this podcast. Okay. Jesus. Wow, I got fucking crushed, huh? Okay, so continue the story. So, point of the story is, I just want to let you guys know, Amex is still hitting me up because I told them that I'm still, you know, making up for COVID. And I want everybody in Ukraine to know that if you're calling me for money, I got none. Okay, so that's just my message to everybody. And Should you be doing this in Ukrainian? I don't know how to say it in Ukraine. You don't know how to say it. I can say "Denyushek nieto." Okay, exactly, baby. That's it. That's yeah. what you need to be told. Why do Eastern European people think that money just falls out of the sky for us here? Can you explain that to me? Why do like well because Eastern Europeans are uh, here's the thing about us, or at least at least what I've recognized from Russians is Russians are they're. Schemers. I wouldn't say scammers. I think they're more schemers. Weasels. Yeah, but they only weasel things to me that don't bother me, right? Like Give me they don't. Example. They don't take from like they don't like rob someone like a random person, right? They would. But if they now, but if they commit crimes against institutions that you're like, yeah, whatever. Like yeah. Russians will be like, yo, they're they'll con run artists. insurance scams. They're con artists. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, they'll run an insurance scam, but right. you're like, I don't feel like bad for the insurance company in this situation. So like, I'm kind of like, yeah, you need to get rid of a car. You talk to a Russian guy, he knows a guy or he's the guy that'll like burn your car out. I've had that happen before. Right, right. I I've, yeah. I've, I've, it's a victimless crime. Right, right. And uh, so I think they just assume that we can just run a shit ton of scams uh, and make a lot more money out here. Have you ever done a little scheming here and there? What no. was the worst uh, thing you got caught for? Like, caught for? Yeah. Like with anything, me getting stealing something out of a store. Uh, I don't know. Maybe the cops had to come over to no, your house I've because never you popped done the fireworks. Anything. I've never done anything. I literally have never done anything bad like that at all really i didn't grow up i dude i lived in brooklyn for two years when i was six through eight and then i moved to new jersey and i grew up in the suburbs and it's like the craziest thing people would do there is like meth steal something yeah <laughs> like or steal something from like you know macy's and even i didn't even do that oh i got caught so bad stealing from uh marshall's one time in did front you of my mom Two undercover cops picked me up. So I was trying to steal Skull Candy headphones and I was ripping them out of the box and I was in the aisle. you got to watch the mic real quick. Why? What Yo, no, you're just too far away from it. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So I was stealing, I was trying to rip the Skull Candies out of the box <laughs> and the two undercover cops were on to me and they followed me through all the aisles and I noticed because I'm a Locius, yeah, I'm I'm actually probably Jason Bourne, uh, and uh, I kind of tossed the skull candies to the side, and they grabbed them, and I came up to my mom, and they come up to her, and they're like, "This is your son." It was the most embarrassing thing ever. Did and she my, hit you? And my mom was like, "I would have bought them for you. I would have got no, them you for you." Have. And I'm like, "No, you wouldn't. No, have. no, 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 we don't. No. You wouldn't have got them for me. I grew up with we have McDonald's at home. Correct. Right? Like no way you were buying me skull. No, candy. not McDonald's, but we had all we had is buckwheat and fucking beans. <laughs> <laughs> I just always got like I'd want like a hamburger from McDonald's and they'd be like we have McDonald's at home I'm like no we don't no the only time I was a lot we ate out the only time we ate out was when the power went out power would go out and I'd be like fuck yes Boston Market or you know I wouldn't even do, that wouldn't even happen out. with me 
Yeah, that would not happen at all. My all mom right, would so borrow wait, food from back, the neighbors. <laughs> go back to your fucking uh, creepy uncle that DM'd you. So I called him. I'm like, hey, what's up? He, uh, you know, he picked up on me. And uh, I'm like, what's going on? He's like, well, I'm 73. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm like, I'm all right. I'm 30. <laughs> what's, what's new? Wait, your mom's brother's 73? Yeah. My mom is, I believe, 67, 66. Yeah, I got it. my parents are a little older. My dad's my dad's I think seventy seventy one. Because my brother is um, my brother's nine years older than me. He's thirty nine. So what, so what he your uncle wanted money. He, what did you guys talk he, about? He he didn't he he kept telling me how bad it is out there. Yeah, no and I kept shit. telling him how bad it He's is out here. Ukraine? You're trying to tell him how <laughs> yeah. we're, yeah, well, you wouldn't believe what goes on in America. I'm like this shit is bad. But I mean, to be fair, the amount of shootings we have in America are probably yeah. Even though I do feel bad, obviously, because, you know, where were you when I was growing up, man? Did you need I needed him? you. <laughs> Did you need him? I think so. I think it would have been nice to have a, a few male figures in, in my life. I didn't have anybody. My pops wasn't around. My brother was kind of like busy all the time. Uh -huh. You know, I'm, I'm a, I, it was nice to have a little uncle to be like, hey. Do you like me? To molest <laughs> How much do you like me? And some yeah. would say it's better to have an uncle that's not present than an uncle that's too present. Right. Because you could have grown up real fucked up. Mm -hmm. And honestly? In the villages of Ukraine? From the villages there from? What stays in the villages of Ukraine? Actually, what happens in the villages of Ukraine should stay. I got some weird stories. What do you got? It's we were very young. Does it count as a bad story if I was young and the people were young too? Like I was like 10 years old and they were also like 10 years old. Does it count? Like, well, it depends what you guys did. Did you kill someone or did no, you just have sexual things happen? We, yeah, it was kind of like we were in sexual shit. You and yeah. a guy? No, it was like... Whoa, 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 whoa. Why'd you just quickly know? Was no, it, it wasn't me dude? and the guy. It was it was my boy. He's like, yo, let's yeah, go. Yeah, it was my boy. He's like, we're so gonna go. not a guy. We're gonna, he's but like, he's let's go. We're going to go chill at this girl's house. And uh, it was like... In the Ukrainian village, we go, we come to her crib, and she's on on top just of the log. Just to see, like, in my head real quick, when I think Ukrainian village, I'm thinking dirt roads, overgrown, whatever, right. Russian Correct. grass. Yes. I have videos of it. I can did, show you did my Did you village. ride bicycles? Were you walking? What kind of shoes did you wear? Tell me everything. I Because I picture literally. I had one pair of shoes. Like, I picture Kazakhstan. Right. I picture Borat. Correct. It was like, hello, <laughs> welcome to my house. <laughs> yeah, you remember that scene in Borat where he sticks his nipples out and he goes, suck my tits, fuck you. <laughs> my favorite scene, I uh, love it. But yo, Is that what happened? Nah, uh, that didn't happen. But we, I had one pair of shoes, dude. I had one pair of shoes and I think they were made out of tennis balls. Uh, what? Yeah, a very weird uh, scenario. It was like gladiator shoes where you can kind of like like your toes can breathe you know that people oh, you had open toe shoes yeah and uh we would go hang out and my boy was like yo let's pull up to this girl's house and we pull up to this girl's house and she's uh, laying down on a log and then she and then he goes <laughs> and he's like yo we're gonna give what her a mean, she, we're gonna go give her a massage <laughs> i said my man i said i don't know what that means i said i don't know what a massage what kind of massage do you i was like 10 and he was like 10 and very odd smell. She's laying. There's a lot the, of odd smell, smell going on. Odor. What do you mean? Like is very weird odor. Can you smell? You is know, she's sweaty. You ever smelled a villager before? No. <laughs> Where would I have smelled? Villagers <laughs> have a, this thing <laughs> smell, dude. Like villagers. What a great pickup line. You ever smelled a villager before? Villagers hey, smell man. like dick cheese. Dick cheese? I don't know what dick cheese smells like. You ever play basketball and not shower for two weeks? No. I'm also circumcised. Uh, see? I'm not. Yeah. Right. So you got the extra fromage. So correct. I get the I get the kefir and the cottage cheese in there. You know what oh I mean? Oh my god, it looks like the fucking oh <laughs> it's gross, dude. No, villagers have a certain smell. Like especially a Ukrainian village. But is there deodorant? Like do people wear deodorant? Is it like a brand? I think they use apples. <laughs> <laughs> deodorant. Stop. I'm serious. What? It's just cut open an apple they, and just, they they rub just put it on? Walnut on the apple and then they throw throw it on their armpit. It's crazy. How long ago is this happening? I know this is you said twenty years ago, no? but like, <laughs> when did they get deodorant in Ukraine? I don't know. I don't think it exists there. I think you, there's no Amazon. <laughs> what Amazon? Are you stupid? They're living in the Amazon. <laughs> yeah, technically. Okay, but they have phones. 
No. What's the biggest? Now some what's, of them have the, like. Okay, so let's go back to when you're 10 and then we'll compare now. But right. even when you're 10. Um, Homie, they did No deodorant. You showered. You there just, was no deodorant, bro. You smell like horse shit in a hay. You don't have toilet paper, right? Do you just wash rags? There, see, that's one thing that I don't remember. I don't think we had toilet paper. I think my, my grandma used to make me wipe my ass with leaves. <laughs> yeah, I'm not even joking. Leaves? Because yeah. you don't want to wash your shitty yeah. rags. Yeah, she's like, go ahead and use that leaf. And can you imagine some of these leaves are like, they're not washed. You're just pulling them off the tree. There's like pollen on it. Dust. I'm allergic to pollen. And I'm allergic no, I'm just to pollen. It in my, I'm fucking shoving it in my ass. Pollen. <laughs> yeah. I literally swell up. It's and crazy. Die. I'm literally shoving pollen in my ass. Where's the running water? Or is there no running water in the village? There, is there like a well? There was a well. Uh, some houses do have running water though. It depends on what kind of money you had. Some people had a little more money in the village. Yeah, some of them, you know, they were there. Do people have toilets in their house, or everyone shit in an outhouse? So outside? only I think like ten percent of people in the village had toilets in their in their houses. That's fucking crazy. Yeah, and people like think and over there, the if you have a nice gate in front of your house, you were rich. You're like, oh shit, look at him with a metal gate, rich guy. It's just like a metal gate. It's nothing like crazy. But the crazy part about it is this sounds like stories from like a hundred years ago, and this is literally. 20 years ago yeah if that but look how much, we have upgraded very quickly though in, in last, ukraine in general in, in, 20 the, in years. the village in like in the world like you, to, like things have the phones have changed a lot we didn't have phones back then right right and our people in that village now geez my mic just cut out the people in that village have phones now yeah they have but they have those cell phone reception in that village some of them even have wi-fi actually bro are you kidding me i don't have cell phone reception on the way up to this office correct but and they, we have, live in they like, do this have this is like in beverly hills and there's i'm like trying to take calls and it's like like and you're like they some of them do have but it's once again it's like 10 to 20 percent. you gotta understand in this village that i'm from there's about 500 to 800 people that live there so you have family back there still, obviously. Yeah. Your uncle and whatever. He's on Instagram DMing you. So clearly, clearly now, they're phones. It's, it's, they got phones. Right. You send money back? My brother sent money back a few times. I never, in, they never interacted with me. I would have sent them some bread. Honestly. Until you got this podcast. And now they're like, which is crazy because you would think they would have reached out to you. When I was on a TV show. When you were on. Boom, I wish we had sound effects. Bam, 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 bam. Val was on Love Island. Temptation Island. Temp Thanks never for mind. It. Sorry. No. <laughs> Val was on the Canadian version of right. Love Island. Temptation Island. It's such a... Temptation Malish Island? Temptation Island. What was it on? Malicious show. E? TNT, USA Tan. Network. I don't know anything about this show. Neither do I. So it was on TNT. Yeah. I've never even That's watched that channel? Episode. Huh? Yeah. yeah. So it's a, it, it I thought was, all they had like was, basketball games. And it was right before like WWE Raw. Watch that. <laughs> what? It was right before WWE Raw. You would be Temptation Island? Yeah. You did that when, Val? So, guys, if you don't know, Val went on a reality show called Temptation Island. Right. And, you know, reality TV is like school lunch. You know, it's disgusting, but we still eat it. You know what I mean? And this Ooh, one, good analogy. How long have you had that one? That one I've had that on Twitter. Seems like very rehearsed. yeah. I, I, no, I wrote that down on Twitter a little <laughs> while back. Um, so oh, I hope someone asked me about reality TV because bam, what do I have in my pocket? You know, reality TV is like school lunch. It, it's bad. It's bad for you, but we still eat it. That's right, baby. Damn. See, Daddy put was that ready on for a, that. Put that on a shirt. Motivational See, poster. Daddy was ready for that one. Um, Temptation Island. Very awkward show. Really? There. Why? Uh, I mean, it's four couples that have been together for six, seven years. That right, but what, so, so describe the concept for people who don't know what it is. So it's four couples go on the show, and then they bring in a bunch of other single people to attempt to break these couples apart. and to sh Or to be like, this is how stronger love is. Or obviously they want people to split up because it's better TV. Right. The way the network pitches it to you is they're saying, listen, you know, this will only you know, challenge your relationship in a good way to show how strong your body is. Oh, that's is. how they pitch it to the couples right. to go on the but show. But at the end of the day, it's obviously malicious because yeah. they know that people are going to hook up, people are going right. to cheat on each other, this, that, third, and right. that builds a juicy story right. for a reality TV show. Right. And uh, yeah, it was very uh, aggressive. I was one of the singles and I had to fight for Were love. you single at the time? I actually was dating a girl at that time. So... For six months, we did dated. she give a fuck that she you didn't went care. on? She didn't care that you went on the show. No. Okay. She didn't care. She, I um I actually 
stole one of the producer assistant's phones and I messaged her. <laughs> I was Did like, you yeah. really? Yeah, I was like, I was like, this is because the girls were on there. They're cool. I I, I have no, uh, you know, nothing bad to say about Jesus. Them. That sounds like you have a lot of bad shit to but say. I, was, that was that was that yeah. Was actually, yeah. that didn't sound like a lot of love. I've only that. I've only kept like. I have very good friends. Did you fuck show, on that show? Nope. Didn't even hook up. No kiss. Nothing. Come on, stop it. Mm-hmm. Val, what's wrong with you? I was the only one that didn't hook up. Why didn't you do anything? Why didn't you try to build yourself like an evil story arc so that you could have been the next Pauly D? You know, I have standards. Okay. So really, please. you wouldn't have fucked anyone on that show. There was uh, mm, no. You know why? People were the girls were kind of being very they irritating were you allowed to drink on the show was yeah we were drinking? getting whacked out oh my out. god i would have been f- blown the dudes too yeah. i was just trying to i would have been trying to break up all the couples i would have if i went on that show which i'm still available guys i will totally do temptation island uh season whatever you're tempting with legs like that the legs like this i could get anyone i want wow that's a good position. um i think i'm gonna sit like this the rest of the show so my point oh my yeah god. i would i would have gone for the villain story arc oh my god that's then, a good and, yeah. fingering position right there for you that's great um, I'm about to push out a baby. Um, yeah, I mean, Temptation Island was a, a good social uh, toolkit for me. It was good. What do you mean? Like, you just get sharper being in a scenario like that. A lot of guys go there to kind of showcase their macho. And you just get to watch that and you're kind of like... Yo, for the next episode, can you bring in some clips? Yeah. I want some clips. I have you. tons. Yeah, I want some good clips. I have some stuff right now on YouTube, a bunch of shit. Oh, really? Well, yeah. let's get it prepped for the for another episode. I uh, have the talk. Unless, I have a... I don't uh, have my lap. Oh, I should have just plugged it all in, but whatever. I, uh, there's a host on E that was making fun of me. She made fun of me. I forgot her name. That's good. You want to be... You want people it. to talk about you. You want to be Bad Bobby or whatever. How do you pronounce her name? It's a good position. How do you pronounce her? Bad Bobby? Barbie? Bad Bobby. Bad ba- why? Bad Bobby. I don't know why she spells it with an H. Sal- <laughs> yeah, well, H. she's not exactly smart, right? And she got, bro, she made so much money the day she went on OnlyFans. Remember that? Insane. She made like a million dollars. All for disrespecting what, Dr. Phil? Yeah, I think Ugh. she, I think she, I think she kind of, what, she made 20 million for the year? Stop. Yeah. That's crazy. It's a lot of money. It's crazy because... In order to get famous off of an appearance, at this point, you got to be out of pocket. Yeah. You have to be absurd because you want people, people want to look at a car accident. Shock value. Yeah. On Temptation Island, you should, probably should have started just like shitting everywhere. I would have gone for the most absurd crap so that they're like, we can't not put this on TV. Right. And then just, I would have given the entire cast crabs. So the, there was an introduction. Um, Right before when we were introducing ourselves to the couples, you had yeah. to do an intro, like one liner. What and was I, your one liner? And my my one liner <laughs> was, "Hey, my name is Val. I'm from Brooklyn, New York, and I'm I'm looking for someone that wants long term bangs. Bangs, bangs. Like what? Like I introduced myself as a barber. I said, "Hey, my name is Val. I'm from Brooklyn, New York. I'm a barber, and oh. I'm looking for someone that wants long term bangs." Meaning, I get it, like bangs, but also like you want to fuck bangs, for a long time. A long time. And they ran up to me. The producer system was like, this is a family show. We can't have that. You can't say that? I We're said, literally trying to break up You know what they made here. me say? What? And then they made me say, hey, basically, I'm a proud mama's boy, and I'll treat you guys girls right. That's what they what? did to me. That's so gay. And I was like, yo, are you guys serious? And then the second season, my boy Deke, by the way, love Deke, hysterical kid. We actually might have to bring him here. He goes on there, and he's like, my heart is small, but my dick is my dick is big, <laughs> you know. But basically, some shit like that, and they let it go. That's I'm like, what? Been, yeah, what I would have been fuck? on that show. I was like, my name's Kirill, and I'm all class, but I'm here to eat ass, <laughs> yeah. and that's it. And then boom, exactly. And I would have eaten everybody's ass. Correct. It's fucked up, bro. They violated me. Make a note, Kyle. We should put that on the shirt. I'm all class, but I'll eat ass. Noted. There you go. Noted. <laughs> I dropped out of class to eat ass. There's something there. That's a good one too. Doesn't even make sense. Why? Like I There's some people what, that are passionate s- about eating ass, not going to class. <laughs> what do you mean? They're like, oh, I have driving class today. I'm going to go eat ass. I really like your glasses today. I think they... Kind of uh, hot. I, I'm trying to... I see myself on the monitor and it's not very flattering. Like I said. About, what do you mean? I'm just not good on camera. I'm good behind cameras. Ooh. I don't have like... Shut up. You look good. 
You look nice. Yeah, okay. You look, you look I've sexy. seen the guys you fuck. <laughs> you were one of them, so. I think that's the, isn't the biggest compliment in the world as a gay guy hitting on you? Hold on, How I many think the guys? camera's losing a little focus because you're, it you can't, got, it can't just, it doesn't know where I am. Yeah, you see, there it is. Oh, that's where I'm supposed to be? Right. Has it back or is it out it was, of focus? It was focusing am on I out of focus now? No, you're good. I'm back? Yeah. Okay. Guys, the show is on Cinderblocks. <laughs> Okay, Cinderblock Studios, welcome. Cinder, yeah, I, I have the roaming camera. I could show you a real quick. Uh, Kyle, does this roaming camera work? Let's plug it in. Um, You've been holding that joint and not smoking it. <laughs> well, I, are you going to smoke with me? Or are you going to? You're just catching a second hand. No, no, no. I, I'm going to. This whole episode is just going to be chaos. Um, I just want to give them a quick uh, so they can understand what kind of facilities we're in. All right. Uh, this is inside our house. In um, well, it's not a house. Well, it's a house. But it's the office for assholes live forever, because we, you know, we figured it's better to work out of a house than some dingy warehouse. Because no girls want to come hang out at a warehouse, no, yeah, or an office, right? It's better to be at a house house, especially in nice Beverly Hills. All right, Kyle. So here you go. Wow, that's not a good first shot. This looks like a really shitty porn is about to start. This looks like casting or a couch great for porn. Ukraine. All right, Kyle. This is on the main camera. Yeah. I can't okay, see guys. It. So there's Val. This is behind the scenes of the Cinderblock Studios. Nice kicks, though. This looks great. This looks great. All right, guys. There's Kyle. Kyle, yes. wave hello. There's this is our monitor. Woo! Um, and this is the whole room. And it's on Cinderblocks. All right. This was fun. This was fun to have this camera. Did I just turn it off? Oh yeah. Show. This is how we're. Oh, see. It's kind of cool to have that angle. What's going on? We should get, when we have enough money, we need to have a camera guy. We need to have cameras on every corner. No, imagine if we could pay a guy to come in here and just roam with a camera, right? And then it gives you another angle to cut at, right? Well, that just looks, this literally looks like we're about to start a fucking, <laughs> which we should. Um, listen. Val, the only thing I got to tell you is you got to uh, keep your mouth over the mic. Well, because look, like right I can, Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the problem is when you, you go like this. They, no they can pick up direction. So like, so listen. Try to how we do it right it here. There. Yeah, you're good. Would you do a reality TV show? I did a reality TV show. Oh yeah, we did. It it. So I was bad. on it with you. Yeah, see, I was uh, this shitty ass show for Showtime called 3 a.m. and uh, never got my IMDb credits for that. By the way, I don't even know if I have IMDb credits. I should for the Netflix thing. But uh, no, yeah, the reality thing for, for Showtime was super fucking dumb. It was like uh, they, they hyped it up so hard. They're like, yo, it's Dick Wolf. It's Dick Wolf. You know Dick Wolf is? Of course. Yeah, Law, Law and Order. Order yeah. yeah, so they're like, Dick Wolf is producing this fucking ridiculous show for Showtime. It's called uh, 3 a.m. And it's about people who live lives in New York City at 3 a.m. And so they're like, we got... We got a crime scene investigator who has to work at 3 a.m., right? We have, like, a guy who works at the morgue at 3 a.m. We have a prostitute that we're going to follow around. And then they're like, we have you because you have the party side. Mm -hmm. And then they're like, there's just going to be people who work at 3 in the morning. Right. Um, and then what it became was a hot piece of garbage because it sounded awesome and uncensored. Like, the, the prostitute story was the entire time it was just hard, like, crying to her boyfriend in her apartment so about being weird. a prostitute and so you're like weird. with this show i wanted to see you like blowing dudes behind dumpsters at three in the morning also their Times crew Square. was kind of weak they yeah. brought like it was like uh, three people on a, in a rig it wasn't like a big setup they didn't really uh, yeah well the show was kind of dumb because they tried to like come up with storylines for every show and this is when i realized reality tv is scripted obviously because i'd be like they try to get me and my ex-girlfriend to fight at a party where she would be like, you flip out and leave. And she's like, I, why, why would I flip out and leave? You know what I mean? Just that kind of shit. Yeah. Um, and then it was just, poor, you know, I got my Outback Steakhouse tattoo on it. On it, yeah. I remember. And then they didn't even fucking air it because they were too scared to show the Outback logo for copyright infringement. Copyright, yeah. So Fat Jew and I had to, I think we wrestled each other covered in like baloney. It was like literally, it was one of those things where I was just so excited that someone cared about me that I was like, what, Showtime? Do you want me to be a character? Let's go. And then they just made us do dumb shit. Are you measuring how far away you're <laughs> <Yeah>. like? <laughs> uh, I'm trying to stay above the mic. Uh, when you're blowing dudes later, you're going to be like, 
Okay. <laughs> I'm like, all right, you know what? Measure. My chin is numb just from holding this, but it's soft and delicious. Um, oh my god! Listen. Yeah, reality TV is just silly. Are I you get getting it. high from that? How high are you? I'm getting there. You want some? No, I'm good. I'm, I'm getting high smoke just watching this you. entire thing, and then Smokies. That's it. Okay. Um, yeah, then the Netflix thing came around. But the Netflix thing wasn't like reality TV. The Netflix thing was dope. Is that, yeah, it was, it was a documentary. documentary. Yeah. It was cool. It was awesome because... Um, you know what's kind of crazy is like I'm pretty irrelevant in the sense of I'm just older now and I'm not... You know, losing Slut Whisper for this long, which was like three years, kind of makes people really believe you, you're dead. Because like I came back with Slut Whisper, and it's like, um, it's wild because it's like I'm I'm in LA and I'm kind of a nobody, right? In New York, I was like, when I had Slut Whisper, I was like literally could run that whole town because there's no influencers in New York, right? And I was like, not a real influencer. I was just like, oh, that's Kirill. He came out of the gutter with us. And now he just happens to have this insane following. And the Netflix thing came out. And it was just like the craziest thing ever. Where now it's just like, I don't go out. I don't do anything. And I don't. Like, there's everyone's way more. There's just way more more influence. There's just more people, right? Like, there's more people who are have stronger followings that are just more connected and yeah but i don't think that's necessarily it's just the true. reason why i think a lot of people don't really fuck with me right like before the pandemic when i had slow whisper in 2000 when i lost in 2019 like uh the netflix documentary made me pretty relevant <clears throat> now it's like you know, maybe it's just me too. I'm just old. I don't want to go out. Like, should I be going out and hanging out with influencers in LA and being why friends not? with like, why not? You know, I don't like, see why there should like, be an issue. You know, should I, I be hanging out with Logan Paul's and the mics and all them? Or I'm like, I'm just old and tired. I relax, but I know, but yeah, you know what I mean? I'm just like, 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 yeah, but when I'm done here, when I'm done here, I just want to go home and lay on my couch and just fucking not think about anything. I feel that. But I just don't know if I'm hurting myself. I'm obviously hurting myself because I should just be out there hustling. I should be like, who's having a party? Who's doing what? Let me be there. Let me get photos with everyone. Let me become friends with all these people. I think you should. So that I could just, well, yeah, obviously. I think we should. We gotta. We should have our own little crew just like everybody else has their own little crew and just run around. Yeah, my crew happens to just be porn stars. And it's like. And I, people I, with neck braces. People with <laughs> neck braces, yeah. Like literally the Special Olympics of humans is me. Um. I also kind of like that you're in your own pocket too, though, because you're you're like kind of like, like Fifty Cent. Fifty Cent doesn't go around and hop on everybody's P Diddy, Jay Z. He doesn't go and like make himself chill with certain people. He kind of he's like I'm Fifty, and I'm just gonna keep rocking with that. And then people come around him, and he right. facilitates everything so. around himself, just like you do. And I th I actually respect that a lot too, because you're like yo, I don't gotta ride on anybody's wave. Like I got my own thing going on, and that's it. Yeah, the problem with us is it's kind of like South Park mentality is that we just. I burned so many bridges. Did you though? No, no. I burned bridges socially because of the thing. Like I'll find, I'll like, I'll meet people or I'll see people and then I'll look at their Instagram and I'll find out I'm blocked. And I'm like, I didn't even, I don't even know you. It's weird. We've never interacted and I'm blocked. That's weird. And you're just like, oh yeah. Like the shit I post, the shit I say, or the shit we try to do or what people think we stand for too. Right. It's like, uh, you know, that's my biggest pet peeve about social media is like people think that like everyone is like a linear thinker. Like if you say that, then you must be that versus like, well, why can't I say that? Because it's funny and not be and without you being like, well, you must be right wing now or you must be a fucking dumb liberal or you must be like a crazy whatever. Right. And it's like I'm just saying things or doing things because I think they're funny or interesting. I don't know. I think a lot of people just want to, you know, be part of a little like. Like I don't post like photo like every other influencer you'll meet out here, and I hate that term, but it is that term. Is like you know you look at their pages and they're just like they're glossy and clean and like it's about them, and you're like there's really hard. It's hard to get upset about anything they do, right? 
Right. You could be mad at their success because you're like, what the fuck? How did you just become? How do you have this many followers and drive this many eyes? I just and make this much money. That's the only hate I can. You can give these people like and then you look at us and you're like, dude, there's about a thousand reasons to not like us. So, yeah, we I just are think on you, an island. I think you step on a lot of people's boundaries and, uh, you know, people kind of. They just build these walls around in, in their social life and in their life entirely. And then when you have a guy like you that's constantly just picking at their weak spots, people just get so infuriated and they don't know how to handle themselves. They've never been in an environment where they have to flip it into something different. Like you and, and me, and let's say, we've been in so many different environments where you have to play the game and you, and you realize you're like, oh, this is, doesn't affect me. You just realize that two hours later down the road or whatever right. was said, it means nothing. So you, knowing that, you start joking around in that fashion as well and you start saying things in that fashion and people can't handle it because they, they just live mundane, very monogamous lives that they, they haven't learned how to do that. So when they see you make a you joke about- you say monogamous? Huh? Do you say monogamous? Monotonous? <laughs> monogamous? Hold on, did I say, when you did said I say mundane, monogamous? Yeah, mundane and monogamous lives. <laughs> Hold on, mundane and monogamous? <laughs> Well, that could be, hold on. What, I mean, that's really, really why in LA it's, you know, I'm from. Uh, hold on, one I'm second. From, what does monogamous mean? Monogamous means you only fuck one partner. You're loyal to one person. Right. And monotonous, that, monot, monot, monotonous. 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 Uh, monotonous. Monotonous means mundane and like boring. Okay, there you go. See? Yeah, just learn like something new every day. Uh, you know what's like, and that comes down to. Once again, the two coasts. And I will be that guy to say that East Coast and West Coast are so different. So different. Because the West Coast is fucking soft. soft and soft. I'll tell you why it's soft. Because <clears throat> before this episode, Val and I talked about, and he's like, he expressed his concerns for me using the word <laughs> And I understand his concerns. I totally get his concerns. Like, this is, we're trying to build something. Why handicap ourselves by using language or like, you know, I, yeah, it's an easy word. It's a fun word, but it's like, is it necessary? And the only, and my, my logic for using the word is the same logic for why I use the word is those are for each sex for women, for men, they cut the same way. Like no other word can. It has nothing to do with gay activities to me. Mm -hmm. Like if you're blown a dude, I'd be like, I wouldn't, you know, that's not to me that's you just being gay so a f to me has no meaning besides it's the sharpest knife i have to attack a guy with because if i call you an asshole at a bar but why is nothing's it, gonna but happen why is it the sharpest uh, because knife? it's insecure from for the guy hearing it thinks he's gay thinks you're thinks Calling you're him emasculating him right, right. so there's those are real fighting words right like asshole you can be like you're such an asshole and the dude will just be like whatever bro at a bar right but if you go like hey what'd you say to my girl you little you say that there's gonna be a bar fight it's right fight. so it's the same reason that you can call a girl a bitch whatever like they're used to, like at this point they're like numb to that word but still cuts so, yeah it does it does they're, they're so, not fans of that you know word. The, the, it's hard to use the term uh in la Right, it's a hard one, and I find myself using it less and less than I did in it's New like York. It's like the N word. Yeah, no, it's not because we're not even saying the N word. Uh, you know, so the my point is, like in New York, it was just an easier word to use. It felt more like socially, I don't know. It just felt like acceptable, acceptable in New York for some reason. I don't know why. I don't know why. Maybe it's because no one got uh, there's people didn't care as much about that word. Or I don't know. I don't know what it is, but in LA, I find myself using that word so much less. Um, I mean, which is weird because there's so many more. <laughs> I mean, listen, if you use it in LA, um, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? What are they going to fucking evict me from this office and let me stop selling dumb t shirts? You'll get hit That's by the thunder that looks like a rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> if his name's Thunder, I will swallow his rainbow. Correct. Um, that's the thing once again going back to it like yeah yeah what, it's a weird thing for sure i uh i mean it's not weird to a, a lot of a lot of people will watch this and be like you guys are ignorant and you get well, i don't know what, of why course we're ignorant what, did you go to college two years yeah same 
So there you go. You want my ignorance degree? You just heard it. Uh, I dropped well, out of college. I don't think. Comedy class. I don't think a degree should uh, qualify you to be ignorant or not. Well, why are you trying? I'm trying to save us right now. I'm going to be like, oh, we're dumb. We're ignorant. Clearly, everything we say, you shouldn't pay attention to. Oh, so, you're just, like, well, so you're putting you know, an insurance policy on this? <laughs> no, I'm just letting people know that they shouldn't really. Fuck you guys. Honestly, I mean every single word of this. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's, let's just stick. We got to stick to our guns here. and We just got to own it. It is what it is. Um, I've been through so much shit that it doesn't even matter. Like, I thought my career was over in Hoboken, which was like the deadliest thing that probably ever happened. That's probably the scariest thing that's ever happened to me. Where I thought everything was over was Hoboken uh, story. I don't, did I tell it already on the, this fucking this fourth podcast of mine? I think we said it on the on one of the practice episodes. Oh, we were talking about it. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, if you guys don't know the Hoboken story, let me just save you the whole story. Just Google Kirill and Hoboken. That was a wild story. You got lucky because it was a couple, dude. I okay. I got lucky on like two accounts, two accounts in that story. All right, here's the quick rundown of the Hoboken story. I used to do these parties in Hoboken, uh, which were amazing because I lived across the river from Hoboken. So it was a 15 minute drive once a month. They would send a party bus for me and my friends. We'd go black out at this bar, spray champagne on everyone and go home. And it was the easiest gig in the world, and I fucking ruined it. Actually, well, yeah, that's my fault. I am the reason the party happened. Uh, so at the beginning of the night, I, I would have a table on the dance floor. But you would go to these, right? You I never been to the Hoboken, Hoboken one. No, you never went? No. Okay, so in Hob this was like a sports bar. So I would have a table, and they would just be ropes. They'd put ropes around our table because people would get annoying, obviously. And I show up early to every party. So, like, I'm there with all the real weirdos, too. And they all start coming over and be like, hey, Kirill, I love you, blah, blah, blah. Right? I take photos and move on. Um, this one dude shows up, and he's a little he's a little jacked with his, like, he's got a hot wife. And he gave me the really affirmative hello handshake. <laughs> Which I was like, ugh, it's one of these guys, right? Like he's like trying to assert his dominance. And in my head, I'm like, well, what the f uh, So then they're doing shots. They're hanging out. They leave my table. They come back a few times. I'm like, these people are pretty fucking annoying. But whatever. He brought his wife and, uh, and he was just like, she's going to do everything. I'm like, all right, whatever. This is great. Uh, anytime someone's like, you know, anytime a dude is like that it's weird to be sacrifice his girl or wife <laughs> yeah it's always such a weird concept to me like obviously i look at her and make sure that she's not fucking like a hostage in this situation do you think that's like a cuck thing they're enjoying it or like i think it's them yeah i mean i guess it's essentially like the cuck lord they're trying to be a cuck lord and they're kind of sacrificing I mean, you know what? their it lamb because it's like me pouring champagne on you isn't really doing anything, right? Like, if Este went to a male strip club and they brought her on stage and gave her a lap dance, or if I, or if I, I guess I wouldn't sacrifice her or be like, go up there, unless it was to embarrass her, right? Right? Like, I, I wouldn't be bothered by that. You're more for the humor. You, you're right. for the humor rather than actual right. touchy, touchy, right. feely, But feely. if, like, I don't know, what, whatever it is to these guys, they're like, this is awesome. I'm going to make it on the story maybe maybe they're doing it for clout maybe they're just doing it so that they can have this moment who cares right to some people this is like well also you gotta understand out. some people are like wow this guy's famous and we want to have our moment of shine and to them that could be their moment of shine right it's like meeting steve-o and him like stapling you in the forehead right you're like ah, if i'm gonna get stapled in the forehead it's gonna be from the guy that that does it that does it right Correct. so like if i'm gonna let anyone drench my girlfriend it's gonna be the guy who doesn't not some bum at another table right correct like <clears throat> so anyways the night's going great i'm pouring champagne champagne's flying when I get really drunk, I also like to go to the bar because I'm like, let me give the bar a show. You know, I'm like, oh, I'm going to go fucking mingle with the fucking peasants. So I go to the bar. I stand on the bar and the bartenders are just handing me a bottle of champagne. Every, she's just popping them when I'm ready. She hands it and everyone's watching. It's a Saturday night. It's fucking awesome. And all of a sudden, like a fucking turkey dinner, this dude is walking through the crowd holding his wife. Like How this. strong was this guy? Yoked. 
and just throws her on the bar. And she's on the bar, and I'm pouring champagne on her. And she's flopping around like a fish. You know, it's hilarious. Everyone's loving it. I look down because I'm just laughing, looking around. The room's great. I just, you know, I'm not just staring at her the whole time. I look down. This dude is like literally fucking rinse cycling her, fingering her on the bar. It literally looks like he's trying to get like the quarters out from between the seats in your car. Like he's just, he's deep in oh there. My God. Uh, he's doing this at the bar. The bar is packed. How, is, how old do they look? 40s. No. So they're, they're, the bar is packed, dude. So this is happening eye level to some people. So you're, imagine you're standing at the bar. I jump up there. Some dude comes through the crowd, throws his wife on. And now eye level, you're with your fucking Corona. And there's a dude. F- I, you literally are looking into her asshole as she's being fingered. So, wow. Every phone is out. This is the height of Snapchat. This is before Snapchat even deleted uh, nudity stuff yet. At the every dude, it was the craziest. It felt like slow motion because it probably happened for like what ten seconds, fifteen seconds. Could a, could somebody put you away to like f- to jail for this, something like this? Like mm, not you? Right? No, I mean but, it's what indecent exposure, probably at best a salute sex act in a bar. I mean. It's not, you know, it didn't happen on a fucking playground. Did he end up finish, finishing the job? Yeah, so no, Did no, 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 no. So security <laughs> runs in and starts grabbing them and they throw them out. That's crazy. Party continues. Um, the next day, all hell breaks loose because the videos are viral now. Right. Everywhere. They're going everywhere. Yeah. Articles start going out, you know, sexual assault at New Jersey nightclub. And my name's attached to it. Gideon was here. Yeah. It's fucking terrifying because I have other gigs. You know, no club is going to be like, yeah, let's bring in that guy that just had a fucking sexual assault at his party. It's crazy. I'm freaking out. They, you know, in New York, New Jersey, 1010 Winds is like the news station. My mom's like, why is your name on the news? Right. Why am I hearing this? That's crazy. Why is my son doing this? She has a day job. She has people she talks to. And it's like... Wow. Why is our last name in articles about sexual assault? I'm freaking out, but I know the whole story. No one knows the whole story. So I'm just sitting there. I'm like, please let them keep digging. So they started digging more. The next article that comes out, they're married. Because the first article was like, this dude grabbed the girl and fingered her. Sexual assault. Next article is like, oh, we just found out that the couple, that they were married. And everything still, becomes st- fine. <laughs> everything becomes fine in at least the, you know, court of public opinion. People are like, all right, they're married. So it's not, you know, obviously, you know, you can assault your own wife, but it stings less knowing that these people were married. And but is it assault because stranger. it's in public? It's not assault at no, home. They're just a good article type. Well, it was originally assault because they didn't know the people knew each other. Oh. Um, right. But now they're like, oh, they're married. It's it's different, right? It's like, okay, at best domestic abuse, right? At worst, a great Saturday. You know. He went full gynecology on this Yeah, He was literally trying to fucking fish out some gum she swallowed earlier that That's day. It's crazy. Um Okay. I still know there's more to the story. Because as he's leaving the nightclub and they're throwing him out, he's going, you can't throw me out. I'm a cop. Wow. And I was like, I knew that. And then like the third or fourth article that comes out is like, oh, he's a cop from Philly, whatever. Right. So now it went completely away from my career and it went to like, you know, Straight police and career, decency. Yeah. Right. Like it, the story became about them and not about Kirill. So Did he I get I, fired. Who? The guy. I don't know. I hope he's doing well. It's crazy. I really do. He didn't do anything bad. At the end of the day, it's like, honestly, like, let's be real here. Like, it's kind of awesome that people got to see someone get fingered at a bar. You Especially should. if it was consensual and they're a happily married couple that right. attended this event. Like, hey, you got a fucking great show. I'm sorry. And then the mayor of Hoboken had the came out, fucking said, this was an affront that my parties are an affront to human decency wow you see what you did hoboken the town named for hobos <laughs> literally <laughs> do you see what you do? you know what you should do 
you should throw a party at a nude beach in Europe. Nude beaches, from my opinion, don't, you know, it's not like the best of the best are going to be there. Like, when someone hears nude beach, it's like. Yeah, but. Just seems like a buffet to me, right? But like, you think you're the like, best of the best is going to be in a Jersey bar? It's also like. It's gonna be, I'm not disagreeing with you. But or Rhode Island. <laughs> it, the problem is, what makes me work is people going to a regular place where they're used to seeing regular things. And then I give them the the irregular activity where they're like, oh, I might see someone's tits tonight who I, you know. Would never see would in never the middle see. of a party. Right. So go to a nude beach. What am I going to add to it? What, throw clothes at them? Right? To make, How are you going to make it any more sexual? Like what, me pouring champagne? Like I also don't want to see that many boners. Like I can't go to a nude beach. I'll be honest with you. At your parties, though, when you are doing your uh, acts and uh, the champagne and stuff like that. Your little pecker gets hard? I don't think most guys get hard, though. I don't think any. I've never been hard in a nightclub. Like all that That's shit. That's weird. It's like you're just too present and thinking about everything that's going on and there's mad loud music and you're. I think you just think it's more of like a circus. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. It's like I don't a, get boners from clowns. You're like, a, you're like at a carnival. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I think people do go to these parties assuming that. Um, They'd have higher chances of getting laid. They're an extremely high chance of getting laid for many reasons. One of them being that they, their thinking is any girl that's willing to attend a Kirill party is already the kind of girl I want to hang out with, right? Oh, my God. Right? You think about that. Sorry, guys. I'm really high. I just need a sip of water. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, that's crazy. That's a crazy story, honestly. The fact that you've... How many years have you been already doing this? Um, since 2009. So 14 years. And I've shut down my fair share of nightclubs. That club's closed. Remember in Canada? Ru I've ruined that club in Canada. Uh, I, I Grand opening, grand closing. <laughs> I did their Friday party. Oh. Monday, they were out of business. It's crazy. Whoever, yeah, they lost their liquor license. Whoever thought it was a good idea <laughs> hiring you for that club. Dude, it's it was, fucked. It's out there. It's uh so the that's why the clubs that book me uh you know they're my ride or dies because these people have been with me through everything like the fact that i still work at shrine in connecticut and if you guys have never been a shrine in connecticut it's so much fun and i've been doing it for 14 years and it's like i've seen some crazy shit there it's a good team it's a great team good it's team. fucking that just do it so well so yeah every party i now do pretty much are people who are okay with uh yeah and the protesters kind of stopped i used to get mad protesters yeah once the once the blue hair and red hair uh protesters come out it's a wrap nowadays yeah and that's why you know what i miss about instagram is the ability to bully people because Oof. i still miss bullying people. i love it. like i'm still a bully like anyone that reads my instagram like now it's such a softer version of what i really am and i wish i could go you've toned 100. it down i've had I, i'd like to maintain a social media presence right you've but like i down. used to bully people so much and it was so much fun to like weaponize that page especially with like dude when i had this chick protest she wrote letters and articles about my party that is that was scheduled to, to happen. And the club owner, this fucking turd sandwich, buckled and said, okay, we're going to cancel on Kirill. And then this article just goes on to like talk about, you know, how I'm like a piece of shit, basically, right? I'm bored. I find this lady's Facebook page. I who wrote the this. article. Yeah. And I start digging. Can't really find too much until some fucking kid DMs me and he goes, yo, I grew up with this girl and she's so annoying and full of shit. Here's some content. And he had photos of her. She went to Halloween one year as little John in blackface. Bro. I posted those photos so fast, being like, this is the fucking bitch that canceled me from this party because she thought I was a piece of shit. And she was a like, teacher, right? Or something like that? Dude, she was horrified because she wrote two, she wrote, no, she was just some fucking dildo, right? She wrote this article 
about like women being you know attacked and i'm a misogynist and they're like you know everything is horrible that she I realized do. real fast and I, go, I once i posted that article because these people don't realize like bad press i eat it up i'm like go ahead i'm glad you wrote that this is free fucking content i posted that the amount of people messaged her she had to write a second article saying like she felt betrayed by her own gender because the amount of women that messaged her and told her to kill herself, basically. Is she stupid? So then what does she I think was going to happen? Yeah. So then I posted the blackface photo and she lost it because I was like, I can't believe she called me out on all this shit. This lady's running around in blackface on Halloween. I got an apology from her and she was like, I'm being attacked and my reputation. And da, da, da. I'm so sorry. Like I just by my judgment and da, da, da. And I was like, yo. You literally took money out of my pocket. Right. Right? Like, for an event you wouldn't even attend. Correct. Like, if you mind your own fucking yeah, mind business. mind your own fucking business. Why are you like, getting involved? Nobody asks you. being such a That's who yeah. shit. See? And why are you... And I just don't understand why people have to attach themselves to... It's not their business, bro. It's like, why are you... Live your life. Why are you paying attention to Dude, everything except I, what you need to fix about your life? It's crazy. I just don't get that. It's crazy because I just saw a video of Obama talking about that. Being like, people believe that they're that that doing something, calling someone out on their fuck ups is gives that person a sense of uh, identity of being like, I did something Obama good. Obama said this? Obama oh, said wow. this in a video. It's wild. <laughs> It's a good video. I give it like, he talked about like basically shitting on woke culture. Really? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but he created most of it. Well, okay. That's the crazy how, thing. how did he create it, Val? Well, honestly, the, the movement <laughs> We're too I, ignorant for this actually, conversation. Actually, I'm not even I'm not no, even going to start this up. I'm not even going to start this up because I'm going to I'm going to get clipped. So I'm not even going to start this up. Way too ignorant for this conversation. Well, no problem. We can't Go discuss ahead. how Obama no. fucked it up. Or whatever, it doesn't matter. But that's pretty impressive that he did that. I'll say that much. That's cool. You know, the crazy part about woke culture is you need it, right? Like, that's the thing. It's kind of like, uh, without it, what are comedians going to talk about? What are you going to, what are you going to, what lines are you going to I mean, cross? Comedians no had line? a lot to talk about before no, woke no, culture. No, they did. What, what lines can you Racism, cross? Racism. Yeah, but that's. The derogatory jokes were crazier. They used to just. But there's so much better now because the comedians that are willing to do those jokes, that's what makes him great, right? Like, Louis doesn't give a fuck, so he'll still do it, right? Right. Shane Gillis. Yeah, all these guys. So right. I think comedians, like, without that, you need someone to push against, to be upset about your material, right? Like, you can't just make material that makes everybody happy. Yeah. You kind of need it. You need the haters. Val, no. Half of my brand is calling out people that get, are soft, right? Yeah. And without the, if everyone embraced this... There'd be no shock value. I agree. You need to get you need to get uh, a little haterade going on for sure, for you to bro the hate comments, dude. There's there's reviews for this podcast that are hilarious. My favorite one. Did you see this one we have on iTunes? No, let me see. This is my favorite favorite. We have and, 19 reviews. No, no, no. Calm down. This guy, 19 reviews. Who do we think we are, Joe Rogan? I think we're, we're a little better actually. Yeah. So we have 64 reviews. Ooh, that's sexy. Okay, so the best Studio. One, this is the best one. This guy gave us three stars and goes four stars because you used to be funny. Oh wow! But he gave us three stars. But right. Then wrote. I, I know four stars. Right. That's the kind of level of intellect we're dealing with. No, but that's also like he snobbed us a little bit. He he kind of. Like, I got a one star right here. Sad society. When these douche nozzles made 40 million and people actually want to listen to them, that's a pretty solid factor. Our society is fucked. What are you shitting me, dude? There's people that are molesting children right now. Right. And, right. And he's like, our sex, society's sex fucked camps. because these guys made 40 right. million. Hey, let me tell you something. Ain't nobody made 40 million here. Okay. I can't believe these people still think <sighs> that we sold this brand and I made 40 fucking million dollars and then have the balls to be like, oh, Oh, this society's fucked if you pay attention to these people. Right. And it's like, it's like, homie, I, I really want to know what that, that guy's life is about. Yeah. How great is your life yeah. that this is the worst thing to happen to you is knowing that this podcast exists? See, that's another thing about, about the internet. It, it gives a lot of people voices and that's cool. 
but that's also not cool. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a everybody, dude. Because I guess I Everyone's wouldn't have had a voice. Now. I wouldn't have had a voice. So, I, but then I just feel like people need some kind of. You know how people oh, take the gosh. SAT to get into into college. Who need to get what? People take the SAT. Uh, yeah, to, I think people should take an SAT for social media. You <laughs> should be able to, to be in it. You know, like what's crazy is I also think a lot changed. Like I said, between the years of me having slow was for losing it and getting it back. What happened in that span of time is it went from, um. When I was, quote unquote, influencing, right, in 2017, 18, 19, my peak years. Mm -hmm. That was crazy. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Anyone else that was doing a hustle was getting herped, right? Because we used to make fun of the teas that girls would promote, right? Yeah. Or other, uh, I forget, like the gummy Vaping. hair. The gummy hairs or the gummy yeah. bear shit, right? People would get clown these girls. I came out when I got Slut Whisper back, and you're like, Oh, everyone's a product now. Every single person on Instagram is selling something now, and it's so accepted, right? Every girl on Instagram is a product. Yeah. There's no more like, here's my sushi, here's what I did, here's like my family, here's my life. Everyone's it's a all salesman. curated. Yeah. Everything on Instagram is for sale now. Yeah. Which and that, you know, and that's why things get popular that are how to things like things that help people i think that that's what's trending now because people got so tired of that selling shit they're tired of constantly so now they're just teaching people how to do their own things no you know how people do like those little workout videos or like life hacks random shit like that I, that's getting more popular now because people are tired of fucking getting force fed sell this buy that get my program get my fucking i'll be course. honest i'm tired of it i'm sure people are tired of my shit i lose a billion followers a fucking hour at this point but yeah, like I follow so many girls. You got, I got to follow people, obviously, out of work reasons, right? Like people I work with, and you're just like, I don't care about. You know, right. I follow the same people I make fun of, and it's the girls that post something like slutty, and then write a caption like, "Oh, happy Flag Day," and you're like, "Oh, okay." Thirty like, percent oh, off. Praying for yeah. Ukraine, uh -huh. you know, and then it's just like all tits and ass, Correct. and you're just like, "Ugh," like. That these are this, but you is, see, this is what my LA life is. And that's what a lot of things right right there, that just shows how valueless society is becoming though, little by little. Because when it gets saturated like that, it's <clears> like <throat> Like I want off the internet now. I used to look bet excited about that. I know. Like all I'm trying to do is make enough money to disappear. To be out. Yeah. I want to disappear. Correct. I never dude there's... I'm jealous of, of Jay Z. Like he has no social media presence and he still crushes it. Right. Like I he's mean, still relevant constantly. He's a fucking billionaire. But, but he, the deals are being brought to him to stay relevant, right? right? Like people want, that's, you know, you, you reach a certain level. Like at that point, people want you as a part of their other sh Like, yeah. Not to like jump to too yeah. many places here, but have you seen Kanye's new outfit? The, you know, he made the new socks with the, you know, he patented it. He just trademarked a new shoe. Did you see those things? With the ones that look like he was just skateboarding, but he wasn't? And he has almost like New those pets. like the, shins, the, the, the shin shredder guards from Shredder from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. He literally, yeah. I, I don't no, know. Did what's you see going? the new shoes he they no, trademarked? No, I didn't see anything. It's he patented socks. They're socks, but they're shoes. But the bottom is a leather sole. Mm -hmm. That's his new thing. So you know, I, I hear that. Know. I don't know. My grandma used to wear those. <laughs> you <Ukraine. laughs> I don't know. Really those is. were usually tapachki, like around the crib. You know what I mean? I don't know what's going on. But I'm gonna tell you one thing. Yo, tapachki is such a great word. Tapachki is one of the best words ever. Tapachki should be sounds like a good Ukrainian card game. Yeah, tapachki sounds like a like a monopoly. Yeah, but for tapachki, <laughs> Russian monopoly, tapachki. Yo, listen to me. The new outfit he has on is insane. I don't know if you see the ugly ass bitch he's with too. You see his new girl? I think she ran Yeezy with him. Did she? Yeah. She looks like she's never ran in her life. <laughs> she looks you crazy. Know, her fucking titties look like the fucking. She has the eggs. same haircut as my mom did when she my mom was like thirty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kanye's really into some really weird women. Like after Kim Kardashian, it's kind of a. What about know, Julia Kim, Fox? Have you seen what, 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 that whole relationship or no? I mean, I don't really know what. <laughs> what. Why? Why that's the that's you see such what, your lateral move from Kim to that? I actually can't talk uh, too crazy about it because uh, I, you know Julia what, Fox. No, what, my uh, my friend has a, a baby with her, and he called the baby after me. So I got a the baby's name Val. Julia Fox has a baby named yeah, Val. Valentino, yeah, Valentino, and he based it off of my name when he was naming the kid. 
because he's Ukrainian and she's uh, Italian. So he did a little. Let me see a photo of Valentino. He's a cutie pie. He's Is a, he? Yeah, he's a cute kid. Have you met him? Yeah, of have course. you met Julia Fox? I've never met her, but I've seen oh, her. Oh, you, you were there when she was baby when he was watching the kid. Well, he would he brings the kid all the time. He the kid is the cutest. Who takes care of the kid financially? He, honestly, he does a really? lot. He's yeah. got more. Money he's a very than good Julia? dad. He's a very good dad. He's the best. He 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 treats that kid with nothing but love. Hold on. Oh, I got him right now. <clears throat> um. The very cute kid. Have you ever had a? If you have you ever been in a situation where a famous person wanted to fuck you? A hockey player, a male. <laughs> yeah. Who? Remember that guy, Calvin? Calvin DeHaan. Yeah. No, he didn't want to fuck you. He's married. He's got a fucking girlfriend, like a wife. Yo, he really He's trying to ran up. He ran up on me with his girl at the club. Oh, okay. They wanted to try a threesome with you. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was That's a funny. Little, I was. But Dude, no. the Islanders once came to my party in Canada, and one of them um, uh, had sex with a with a. Really? Yeah, I can't find the picture, but whatever. Um, yeah, it's, I've never had a famous person though trying to come after me like that. Now, yeah, and look how good looking you are. It's crazy that I was just thinking about this yesterday. That non-famous women can fuck the most famous of men but non-famous men rarely get i think jayla dated a random cop from the city really she, she was walking out one day and he was like kind of in the line of protection and she's like wow you're handsome and i think they Are you serious? Up. yeah i'm pretty sure there's a story like that yeah that's just I mean, it just blows my mind because it really bothers me because i'd like to meet my heroes like it must be awesome to get fucked by somebody that you lo like worship, right? Like, and girls get to accomplish that. Like, if you're a, a hot chick, like you can bang Brad Pitt, like you can bang Leo, you can bang your favorite rapper. Like, it's so cool they get to see the world through those through that, right? Like, they get to experience when you not were only younger sex, not only sex, because sex is great. But you also get a piece of that life. Like you get to go on vacation from your shitty existence, whatever, and that, you know, we're all have such limited time on this earth. And I'm very envious of women's ability to gain access so easily. Like I have to work really, really, really hard. Yeah, men. To be able to maybe yeah. even one day see a slice of Leo's Correct. life, right? But a chick who's just got a nice pair she's of She's got to look dope. And you're you're on the yacht with, right. with Leo. There's no, you know what? Like at the yeah. end of the day, like Jennifer Aniston isn't gonna fuck me, right? No, right. But why Brad you Pitt, you would want to rock out Jennifer Aniston? Why not? Who was your like when before you even you know were relevant and in the field and people knew who you were? Who was a famous chick that you wanted to lay down on? I've always wa I've been in love with Tiffany Amber Thiessen my whole life. Who the hell is that? Uh, Kelly Kapowski from Saved by the Bell. Because she wasn't good on the show. She was cute. But when she got older and her fucking, ooh, she got great titties. Like, phenomenal. You're a big, you're she's, a big, a, she's a awesome. She's on that show. I think she's on White Collar or Suits. One of those shows she plays. You're the a big milk guy. Oh, my God. I love those fucking milk. Yeah. I love fucking, oh, sweater puppies. Mwah. That's tetas. your favorite thing? I love tetas. You know why tits are, to me, are better than ass? Mm. And you know, sorry, Estee, you're listening because you have a better ass. Than I was just kids. about to say, it's fine. It's fine. Estee and I are realistic with you know with our uh, expectations. What my thing is, I don't like that asses are in. I miss when tits were in because asses are in. And the problem with asses is fat bitches lie very well with asses. It's hard to from a, a fat girl from the back. Right angles, like you're like, yo, damn, that's a fucking fine bitch with a fat ass, right? You throw that, you throw that girl around. It's a whole different story. Well, you better be doing a lot of deadlifts if you want right? to throw so anything like, around. Right. So, like to me, I miss tits because from tits you could see, you would know the whole picture. To me, hmm. I miss, I miss a good pair. Of, I miss when tits were in. And also, if you want ever want to see if a girl's fat or not, is like uh, fat girls don't post their belly buttons on Instagram. That and also the arms. Look at the arm width. Yeah, by but the they, tricep. Can, they can lie. They can Photoshop the arm sometimes. 
What they can't, what they do is you look for when they wear like. Uh, if you don't see a belly button in any of her photos, you, my friend, uh, are trying to fuck a fat bitch. Listen, you don't think so? I don't show my belly button. I mean, I don't have that issue. Once again, right? You're hot. You have abs. You show your. I belly work button. out, so like I don't know what's going. on. My belly button is perfectly fine. The only thing is, it's very hairy. That's okay. It's you still. It's still there. You my, still show it. My belly button looks like a little Chewbacca's ass for sure. Um. Yeah, there's a lot of lying going on in social media with the with the angles. Girls love to frame themselves as, you know, these lies, and then. When you call them out on it, they say, well... Do you call them out on it? I don't call them out on it. It's an up, It's like it's like calling out, like, I don't for it. existing, right? You're like, every girl does it. Like, thankfully, yes, they doesn't. Like, I'm so happy that she's not that type of girl. Like, to me, Este... The sexiest part about Este to me is the fact that she's cool, right? She's so cool to me. That I just got a phenomenal turd cutter, right? But like, that's the coolest thing about her is like, I don't, it would be like losing, if her and I stopped being together, it would be like losing a friend. It wouldn't be like losing a girlfriend. Yeah. It would be like, yo, this person was just cool. And what would bother me is everyone would stay friends with her because usually when you break up, people stop talking. Like, nobody talks to my fucking exes, right? Yeah. Because she wasn't cool. Like, right. people want to hang around Este. And uh, you know what Este reminds me of? This is the perfect example of Este. She is I Love Lucy. When you used to watch Lucy at all or no? No. Oh, forget it. I think I'm too young for that. Okay. Well, for any of you listening, if you know Este from my social media, the perfect way to describe her is she's Lucy when she's trying to wrap chocolates in that factory. And she just can't keep up. And it's super crazy. And she's super frustrated. And you're like, yeah. That's us. Well, listen. It sounds that you, you. It sounds like you really love her, and I like that a lot. It makes me want to hug you right now. Why? You want to have a moment? Yeah. You want to hug because I love my girlfriend. Yeah. yeah. I love my girl because she's also very. She owns herself, and I like that. I like that she. She's very self aware about who she is, and she likes everything natural. And she's she's not trying to be out there frame herself like somebody that she's not. And I feel like a lot of girls, for most part, always want to join a bandwagon. Always want to join some kind of like well yeah they want to join a bandwagon most girls you take to dinner you go what do you want to eat they go i don't know most of these girls you meet are literally just looking for someone else to make the decisions like my boy's on hinge right now and he showed me like two people he matched with and the bios that these girls put up for themselves make me just i'm like thank god i have my girl like thank god i don't have to date again like just, I literally sit there. Yeah, and I'm like, I, I say oh the same thing. But if, but if Este died, it would be f so fun to be single. Wow, that's fucking crazy. Like I love Este, and I'm so thankful I'm not single. But goddamn it, if that bitch croaks, like, do you understand the sympathy? Of a I would be, I would probably die of some. Have her do some squats right now. Why? Because <laughs> she'll just back if Este dies. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I scare Este every time. I tell her she's gonna die to giving childbirth. Uh... You're I don't gonna, know why you're I said gonna, I think what you're gonna get Estee pregnant. What? I think I think uh, Estee's gonna have a kid, dude. She no, 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 no. Well, by now I think the kid might have Down syndrome if he comes out of her because she's already, you know. Yeah, Estee's shot. <laughs> a little <laughs> older. Yeah, Down syndrome. Estee naturally. Estee is on the cusp of Down syndrome herself. Oh my god. Estee is not doesn't have Down syndrome. She has syndrome Down syndrome. Sounds down. like a song from Metallica. Down. Down syndrome. <laughs> well, isn't there? Oh, system of a down. Yeah, yeah I was like, what the hell? Yeah, down. Uh, <laughs> down syndrome sounds like. Maybe that's why I'm allowed to make <laughs> jokes because I'm dating one. I, I'm really like I can make gay jokes because I've kissed enough men. And honestly, who's to decide how what the definition of gay? Also, everyone's like, keep the gov keep everyone out of my bedroom, right? Everyone's like, everyone stay out of my personal lives, right? When people are advocating for gayness and trans, right? Or right. whatever. They're all like, what do we do in our bedroom is our business. And it's like, yeah, except you've dragged your bedroom out for to everyone everybody. to see, yeah. right? So it's like, you don't, like, what, because, like, why can't I just tell you I'm gay? Like, what, do I need to have a fucking video Correct. of me blowing a guy? And I also, thought you wanted my... 
I'll t- mouth my rules. I'll tell you one story. I was just uh, going through TSA and uh, a, a transgender dude was passing by and I guess they did a pat down on him and I'm getting my stuff from uh, whatever. The, the bin? Uh, the, yeah, from the bin. And I hear him go, they love to gr- grope on a ch-. They love to grope on a ch-. Well, that's kind then, of a fire line. And then I was like, okay. And then he's like, basically making about the fact that it's all about him. It's like it's like my man. I get groped too all the time. So don't make yourself too special. Like I like do it, it's every time. It's just because he's and they check. Well, him, it's because it's like a big we, deal now, right? Because it's the whole idea that people hide behind their identity, right? It's not like you know why can't a gay person or a transgender person, you know, you call them an asshole, they're like, oh, you hate us. It's like can I just can't that person be a piece of shit? Right, so it's like they just hide, you know, that transgender person that got patted down is just like, well, let me look for the biggest victim card I can pull here versus like, bro, they're just going to touch your dick and you move on. Everyone hates it. We do it. It's TSA. Your life isn't changed in any way if they do it. It's not like they're like, oh, well, we're going to pat you down and then you're not allowed to like, you know, get water on the plane. Right. They're just like, whatever. Just get it done. Go go to the air. Like you don't gotta make a you know like we all a fiasco. Get, out we of all it. get profiled. White people. We get you know we're all potential school shooters. Right. We're fucking crazy nut job like lunatics now. Right. No, you know there's there's a lot of bad apples out there. So <laughs> is that the moral of the story? Yeah. It's it's a lot of of groped and you're like a lot of bad apples out there's there. There's a lot of bad apples. I love out that there. line. What did it say? They just grow up a tree. He's like, they love to grow up on a tree with a, with a, with a Southern accent. He had a little bit of a Southern accent. I think. Yeah. Maybe they said the South they scares love me. to grow up with a tree. Maybe they need to grow up with a tree. They need to grow, grow up on a tree. You know, what's crazy about uh, transgenders to me is when, when they're good, right? Just like anything, right? Like you're hot. I'm not like it applies in nature everywhere. Right, everywhere. Uh, it's like when they're good, when they behave. Right. No, I when just they mean, behave. I just mean like when a transgender looks hot. Yo, I'm. I question a lot about my sexuality. What do you mean? Like when you see like an ugly, you know, transgender, you're like, all right, yeah, yeah. Like I'm never like gonna get turned on by that. But like I know some transgenders that you're just like, dude, like. I know they have a penis, but like with enough tequila, you're like, that's a fucking sexy chick with a penis. Like, I'll tell you that Emma Rose and they make fun of me in the office for it. But I'll tell you what that fucking chick. Like, if you didn't know she had a dick, you'd be like, that's one of the baddest girls in the room. And you know what's crazy about that story is her and I, we met once. So but she's let me a model ask you, for us. So but she if you see, wait, if you've seen a go. good uh, fake Louis Vuitton bag, right? It was the best fake ever. Yeah, my mom has plenty of them. And I'm saying you would be like, and then you found out it was a fake Louis Vuitton bag. You would be okay with wearing it? If I got it for free, why not? <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't get scammed like that. I Someone's can't. like, yo, you want some free Louis? And I'd be like, yeah. And then they're like, a week later, someone's like, you know, that's fake. I'd be like, yeah, I mean, it was So free. you would be one of those guys in Pakistan driving a fake uh, Ferrari <laughs> that they make in their backyard. Whatever. Whatever. I can't do it. No, but like, so there's, so we met once. I, I did a party in Queens. Mm-hmm. I used to do this party in um, at Central in Queens. Um, right next to the Rikers, Rikers Island. <laughs> dude, I have footage. She showed me. Because Emma Rose now works with me all the time. Like, she's a model. We'll do a bunch of fun. Like, she has a great sense of humor okay. about being a transgender. So, like, we rock some fucking dope, like, content together. Not sexual. Calm down. Uh, I'm not uh, thinking uh, anything. But she showed me footage of herself at my party. I sprayed champagne on her tits. And the crowd around her is like, ah, and you look around, you're like, that's the hottest girl in my video. And there's a photo of her at the bar I took. She showed me all this stuff. She made it all to my story. When on Slut Whisper, I used to do nudity and stuff. And I'm like, dude, I'm just telling you, like, if I didn't know you were trans and you were at my party and I was in the mood to cheat on my girlfriend, like, it probably would have been her. She was like a hot 
transgender. Listen, I mean, there's. If I've probably you. You don't think you've ever been okay? So people are. Were you a to, slut? Were you a slut? Growing up, yeah, yeah. I mean, I had my face. Like, like here's the thing. I, I love getting blowjobs. Mm-hmm. Love getting blowjobs, and I like getting blowjobs in places where I shouldn't be getting blowjobs. Like you know, white taboo. But yes, no, no, not like creepy shit, but like, uh, just not at. You know what I mean? When I was like fucking around, and girls would like want to fuck me, I would try to like maybe even do it at a party. In the bathroom. Right. But I'd want to like catch a blowjob. Right. Right. Or like at an after party, whatever. It was just like, it felt. Yeah. Like you're cool. doing something bad. Yeah. As gay as it sounds, it felt fucking cool. I was in my fucking 20s, early 30s, just trying to be like, oh my God, girls want to fuck me for once. Right. right. Like, but I would only try to do blowjobs because I was drunk and lazy. So in that time period, like, I don't check for parts, right? When a girl's like, I'm going to suck your dick, right? Like, I'm not like, all right, you know, drop your pants and make sure you don't have a penis. Right, you're not a mechanic. <laughs> how many? <laughs> exactly. I'm not a mechanic. So how many, how many transgenders do you think suck my dick? I think about that often. Probably too much. I have a feeling none. What do you mean? Because back you think then, they would have told because me? back then the jobs that they were doing, uh, like as far as transitioning, weren't back as good. then. Val, you make me sound ninety. Yeah, but you got to understand, as of recent years, uh, things have changed drastically compared to like four years ago, five years ago. Like the, they weren't getting such good work done for them to not look like not look like like a crazy square jaw or crazy fucking. But you're also Adam's assuming apple. that those are all like that would hinder me in any way what is it? you're too good looking i guess you don't understand. wait excuse me what if you, i saw so what uh, you see if you saw a huge adam's apple and a huge jawline you would be like oh okay the rock is blowing but me. if she's and got like, nice titties i'd be like oh so you're one of those guys that jerks off to like a ceiling fan <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, i find the beauty in all women <laughs> yeah, okay you're sick i will dear, yeah why it's self-preservation don't you know we're animals val nah, and God my bless. job is to spread my seed listen i wasn't gifted with good looks i'm ugly on the inside and outside Bing. plug for the podcast but, i don't know so, why you carry so, this token that you're so ugly you're not no, that ugly yeah no val because you get to fuck a different caliber of women so you don't understand your privileges. I am forced to fuck, Bro. you know, I get last call. I get like the 3 a.m., the fucking stale donut, <laughs> right? You, you get the empanadas that have been there for a little while, huh? Yeah, just dripping in oil. Yeah. Yeah. No, but that's also, I've seen you with good looking women before. And yeah, yeah, that's the bullshit. ones that end up being like clout chasers. Thank God, right? Thank God clout chasing exists. That's literally the only reason I probably had any desire for It's popularity. crazy that clout is the new dollar. I just wanted to see how long we could sit on that one. Yo, by the way, this weed, I have the worst headache. Really? I, but I, I was smoking the entire time. I mean, joint. homie, you got fucking 17 hats on your head and, and a fucking pair of headphones I squeezing your ears. I look... <laughs> you look skid row. This looks like... Yeah. I don't know what's happening here. Th these are not my angles. This might need to be an audio-only episode. Also, follow us on the gram at Listen Ugly, please. We need those followers, yeah. baby. And it's Show us love. OS and Slut Whisperer. And then, uh, what is it, Kyle underscore Mikami, or you got it down yeah, to one word now? It. Kyle underscore Mikami. Kyle underscore, there's another Kyle Mikami out there? There is. There's another Kyle Mikami out wow. there. Wow. I wonder if he's a, what he's up to. Yeah, I wish I could get just Val on Instagram. Why can't you? Because somebody took it. Or, or just is Val it OS. Is it Val OS is not active, it's some Colombian person. Oh, we can get it for you. Can we get the Val OS yeah, yeah. one? Yeah, we'll talk cool. after the show. Awesome. All right, Kyle. Wait, clap us out. All right, guys. You goodbye. <laughs>